Hello there again, folks. Welcome to another Train Sim World 2 video. We're back on Sherman Hill. Um, something I wanted to touch on firstly is when I looked at the SD40-2, it gave me the default option of using the SD40-2 from Cane Creek. And uh, for whatever reason, that's set up as the default dash two. I didn't know the one with the red stripes, the one you need. So you need to go in there and choose the one with the red stripes. So I think I have got the new one. So what we're going to do is take a look at this thing first here. Uh, okay, so this does have correct lettering and marking. The one I was in uh, when I made the video yesterday did not have this correct uh, marking. It looks a little bit lighter in here. The, uh, the glass is different and very blocky for some reason maybe my I and I settings they've actually got the correct logos and stickers and numbers and uh, weight tear and all that stuff up there which is pretty cool um, I don't really know what else all they changed uh, I think this AC unit might be new I don't remember that being there um, so yeah I'll go ahead and open the window throw the reverser switch in Pop it thirds. Check out the heads. I'll get the engine run on, gin field on, and fuel pump on. Let's see what else we got. Headlights, rear, step lights, we'll pop those on. Gauge lights as well. Uh, airflow indicator looks kind of weird. I don't know if it's supposed to look like that. Um, there's your bank and com as well. Uh, looks pretty normal. Set that to freight and lead. Got some pressurization happening there. Number lights on. Platform lights. So it looks, you know, pretty prototypical. Um, warning devices. We'll open that. Uh, let's see. Gin field closed. Because I believe this up here works as well. So this obviously was not in the Cane Creek variant. Um, I think they did newly model this thing. Now, does that mean they did a complete, you know, brand new SD40-2? Most very, very likely not. Um, it already existed, and that was a lot of work. But they did go through and add a lot of stuff and make it UP zone. Uh, I want to go ahead and test the horn out and see how good this thing is here. Dude, that, that ain't too bad. That is not... What the hell? There we go. That ain't bad at all. I was wondering because I remember hearing like, Oh, new horn for the Dash 2 and all that. And I got in that Cane Creek Dash 2 yesterday and it was just garbage. It sounds good. It sounds almost a little fouled. A little bit, which I, you know, I don't have a problem with that. I know some people are like, it's foul, it's horrible. Kind of like it. Maybe a slight air leak or something. It's got a nice beginning. There's virtually zero loopage. Nice fade. Try and do as quick blast as possible. That sounds all right, man. That sounds all right. That's good. That's good. We finally got some good horn sounds for American Freight Stock. About dang time. Headlights still look pretty crappy. The number boards look all right. The uh, the lighting, you know, because the, the lit spot isn't always, like, behind each number. It's kind of in the middle. So that's how it looks when they're lit up. Dude, that is not bad at all. I think I uh, might do this. I just hope someone does the actual sound pack. I know a guy named Griggs did uh, the uh, Dash 2 sound pack for this thing for, uh, I think, Clinchfield for the SD40 and uh, King Creek and CSX. So, yeah, And that was a pretty damn good sound pack for Train Sim World, so hopefully he'll, uh, he'll get around to that if he can. That's not too shabby, though. So, yeah, SD40 Dash 2. The bell is, you know, is still a, a messy diaper, but um, 
you know, I'd rather have a good horn over a bell. Personal preference. But, uh, why does it keep popping me there? That's weird. Take a look at the overall engine itself. So, I think yesterday when I was looking at these, it was a, a new SD40-2 and an old one. Because I noticed the numbers were different. I think one of them was not painted and just missing completely, and the others were this, which is the new version. And those numbers actually look really sharp. Correct font, they look they look all right. They do look all right. Again, with Dovetail Games, the modeling, never really a problem. It's a good looking engine. Paint looks all right, the colors look pretty correct. Coming very correct-ish. Logo looks all right. It's not, you know, fresh and clean. These are workhorses here. They're not, uh, they're not show ponies, if you will. Cock. Um, yeah, they look all right. Very weathered nicely. Very weathered nicely. Weathered very nicely. I, uh, swallow my tongue sometimes. Um, yeah, these things look pretty darn good, though. Let's see what else we got here. So the windows actually open and close. The mirrors open and close, which is nice. Since they don't work and they suck and they kind of get in the way, it's nice to just leave them pop back like that. Let's see if the visor works. It it does indeed do. Oh, there goes a uh, rack train. Nice. Nice. Got your visor up here. Cab light. Rear door, uh, headlight control, isolation switch is on run. Let's see what else. I feel like the control stand looks a little different, but it's very blocky and chunky, like texture-wise. Um, like some of their other stock has been, it just does not look that great. Um, you know, as a whole, this console, but it, you know, it's not horrible. This radio actually looks pretty crispy. It's not a bad looking radio. Get up out of here. What else we got over here? It's the heater. As you know, it gets cold out here in Wyoming. The uh, shotgun and the female dog seat. Use cabinet. Come on back here. Can we open any of these panels? I see a window. Let me in. Uh oh. All right. So just like the OG CSX um, bay, you can open it. That's pretty sweet. I'm assuming you can do the the, the standard cold start as well. It's your engine prime and start the governor. Can you actually move the governor? I don't think you can. I thought you could. I believe that's on a train sim thing I'm thinking of, maybe. Yeah, I swear you can move the governor. Maybe not. But that's cool. I like seeing the, uh, the innards. So yeah, the, uh, the new ish, uh, SD40-2 definitely isn't as bad. Let's sit here and load it up some. We got our key in. Everything's on. Throw it back in neutral. Full Indy. Drop to uh, handle off. Try and charge it up here. Is that new? I need to go back and play with the CSX-2. It sounds different. Did they... There's actually some, like, bass. Some deepness in there. Is that new? Did they, or did they just edit it somehow? I don't remember the Dash 2 sounding like that. It was always a very, like, you know, very weeny sound. It still doesn't sound like the real thing. Um, 
I feel like it sounds different. Well, damn. All right. I, uh... I'm kind of digging this new dash, too. That's not too bad. Not too bad at all. Let's go a distance away here and load it up. Let's see what she sounds like. There is actually some deepness to that sound. That rumble that a lot of U.S. engines miss in this game. That is not, that is not default sound from Heavy Hall. That sounds different. It sounds really different. I mean, just listening to the freaking King Creek Dash 2 yesterday. All right, well, I didn't even know that they added sounds. I don't know if the sounds are different or they're just edited in some which way, form, or fashion. I do like the handrails as well. I just noticed painted white. That looks good. The trucks look good. The wires and cables all hanging down where they should be. Let's see if the actual pins move. Push it in. There they go. All right. Oop, oop. Oh there. Oh there. There we go. Yeah, that's that's not bad. I think I'll be using some of the dash too. All right. So the main course of the video is uh, a mod which enhances performance. I've got a brand new computer as of a couple of months ago. It's nothing fancy. It's not a NASA computer, not by a long stretch. But uh, when I first started playing Trains in World 2 after I got it, I noticed a marked improvement. Um, but this route is very heavy. Uh, I think it's just the length of trains, which is cool. You know, even though it's much closer to realistic American freight lengths, you know, than our other freight routes in Trains in World 2. But it is very taxing on performance. And there is a ton of 3D grass and bush and stuff like that, which may tax it as well. So anyway, there's a mod out by uh, the one and only Yuri, I believe, um, a solo, which is a, a Sherman Hill console timetable enabler. So this is called a Gen 8 console timetable. What it does is take the the train lengths and, and lash up and consist back to pre-Sherman Hill. So if you were to use CSX Heavy Hall, it would be uh, closer to those train lengths, which, you know, were much smoother. Uh, because I've already noticed, I turned my, my resolution all the way back up 200% as far as it could go. Uh, jacked up my INI &I settings again, and I'm getting a flat 60 FPS where I have it locked. So this thing works. Go and get it. I will link it down below. But what I'm going to do is try to go from uh, Cheyenne to Laramie with a, a full stack train. Uh, and just see how long it is with the mod, and just check out the route along the way, such I didn't really do that in the last video I made. I kind of just did the anchor points and a, a few other places, so we're going to go ahead and hop on over there. But this mod, anyway, um, for, for some reason or another, I don't know if it'll be fixed, it, it, it does not include currently the 1022 service at Chemical Switching. Uh, and Cheyenne Yard. That doesn't work presently. Um, I don't know if it will at any point, but it's nice to actually get better performance for the route, so we'll see that here shortly. But uh, as with, you know, a lot of stuff, it's on Train Sim Community, and I will link it below if you want to go and pick that up. Again, it is PC only. Uh, I think consoles get these link trains by default, so you're good to go. Consoles, you win. Good job. All right, um, we're going to go ahead and hop on to the other thing. We'll be right back. All right, so we are here in Cheyenne. Uh, we are going to take this stack train uh, from Cheyenne to Laramie. And uh, let's go ahead and get this thing set up because it will take a moment for the brakes to come off. So we'll go ahead and check everything we need back here. Uh, I'm going to leave the safety system off because I'm going to be out looking around. And I sure as hell don't want this train shut down on us and have to restart it because that would take a lot more time. I just noticed that. 
That hose actually moves right there. That is pretty good. That's all right. Did not notice that before. That's not bad. Not bad at all. Got one coming in on us. The, uh, I think it's about 11.30. Yep, 11.30 eastbound must be. All right, um... Let's see, make sure we got everything on that we need. I'm going to leave the safety systems off because, uh, you know, like I said, I'm going to be out looking around because there are a couple of things to see on the route I do know of um, that I've yet to really see with my own eyeballs. Uh, so let's go ahead and hop back in the son of a gun. Throw the reverser in. Let's get everything set up here. Step lights off. I really hate how they start on. Get them lights all the way on. Handle off. Go ahead and throw on the Indy. Alright, so let's get down here. Gonna brighten it up a bit. Uh, let's see. Operator controls. Set it to lead. We're currently cut out. You want to cut it in? There you go. And you should be good to go. So let's go ahead and start dropping them. Alright, so essentially that brake pipe, the BP, is going to float anywhere between about 88 and 90. Uh, and that's, that's fully charged and you should be good to go. So this mod I was talking about, we'll go ahead and step out and look around here while this is happening. You'll notice right off the bat, it cuts down the the rolling stock to a nicer level and the cool thing about this mod is it's not it's not a one or the other type of deal where you gotta pull it out if you want the original game back to how it was it's simply two timetables the first timetable at the top is the original timetable with the closer to realistic longer trains and then the second timetable down below is your shortened one so I tested it out just before this the same service had four friggin' engines on a stack train. That is stupid uh, <laughs> and unnecessary. Stack trains are generally light uh, freight trains here in the States. Now, if they do have grades to contend with, they may have a pusher on the back uh, or in the middle sometimes, DPU, but they typically aren't going to have four up front, two in the back. It's, it's a bit overkill. Um, so anyway, it's, it's shortened. So we've got just two engines here. Go ahead and take a look down at the back. So what else is kind of ridiculous is... can hear the air coming up there. Um, these trains are so long by default that you cannot even see them. They don't render because of the... Uh... Oh, he's moving again. I was like, what the hell? They don't even render. So normally, when I checked our train, the one on the left here goes around the bend there and it doesn't even render so the farther you go it will pop in pop in pop in so it's kind of pointless you can't see the whole damn thing anyway unless you want to watch it roll by maybe so we've got two on the back I guess no biggie I mean it'd probably just be one on the back but anywho diddly We gotta get this train to Laramie. We currently have a green. Let's see how we're doing on that pipe. Looking good. Go ahead and throw it forwards. Engine idle will come up. Let's open these windows. Not that it'll help. I hope they fix that uh, internal occlusion for the audio. Gonna give it a notch. Start coming off the independent brake. Gonna go ahead and bail off the rest of the auto or the train brake. Now we're rolling, but we may slack up here in a minute. Just wanna kinda pull it out. It's still probably coming off in the back. I don't believe we have to do anything to the uh, engines by default in the rear. I thought you could move these mirrors, but I guess not. What about the visor? No, that's irritating. 
Ah, oh, well that sucks. It'd be nice to move that. Alright, let's give it another scoosh. See what happens. Brake pipe's 89. Equalizing reservoir's 90, so we should be good to go here. It can still take a bit of time. The longer the train, the longer time it'll take as well. Go ahead and check this stuff once again. Lead cut in. I don't really think there's anything else you can do. Can't even click the DP button. Pop it off and pop it back on. Which you definitely probably would not do in real life. In real life. Cut it out, cut it back in. What did I miss? Are we actually having to wait this long? It's been like five minutes already. It's not a very long train. Yeah, we're dragging. Pins are in on the uh, engines. And here I'm shucking and jiving back here. Let's go check out the rear set. Maybe it's still coming off. Give it a minute. Brake pipes at 90. So. Uh. Hello? I mean, it, it definitely can take a minute to air up a train, but this thing is not extremely long. This is like a local length, basically. <laughs> Do I need to hit the banking com button? I don't think so. Son of a gun is making a lot of noise. Gotta load in, do I? It says off. Let's see what happens. See, I can never tell with this thing if, like right now, it says banking com on. Does that mean that it's on? There we go. There we go. I didn't have, I forgot. It's, it's like that cheat button. 
That's what it is. I'm an idiot. Forgive me. We sat there for 10 minutes. For no reason. I'll see myself out. Thanks for being here, guys. Um, we'll go ahead and watch this thing roll by here. See if we got the different horn. Nah, we got the same horns as the last video. It's not a bad horn, though. Not two shabs. That sad, sad, depressing bell noise. <laughs> sad bell noises. Yeah, so that's what it is. You just got to pop that banking com on. Because we were ready to go from the get-go. So. It's most irritating. But uh, it is what it is. All right, so we are already starting on that grade a little bit. We got to go V at 35 miles. Heading to Laramie Intermodal Yard. Going to go ahead and give her some more juice. Almost full of beans. You got to get speed while you can out here. There's a very high driving position on this thing. I mean, the, the, the person that you play must be, uh, you know, a giant or something. I noticed this yesterday, this little creek down here. That looks pretty good compared to a lot of their standard small creeks. How it's just like the water and then straight to land and it kind of looks like dog dew. That right there actually looked pretty good. Got another train heading in over there. Looks like a coal train. And I am getting much, much better frames with this mod. Yuri, you're a godsend. I'd love to be able to use long ass trains, but uh, I'd rather have performance. There's that transition. like those old train cars sitting over there. Storage space, essentially. Got a high green. Zoom in a bit here. Already on a 0.8% uphill gradient right now. For another notch. First crossing coming out of Cheyenne. The bridges look good as well. The bridges look pretty legit to the area. Alright, we got a 40-40 speed board over there. doesn't look too bad out here. I think the, the major thing is the just kind of that washed out look of everything. Yes, it is dry out here, but it's almost like it almost looks like a damn beach or something. Uh, it's a little too dry. And this is, I, I think I chose July. So summer solstice going on here. Shade it. This overpass right here doesn't look too bad. I like these rocks and the grass up here. That looks all right. Very all right.
Interesting looking highway there with uh, two double yellows. <laughs> what the hell? Alrighty. Got another train coming eastbound. We can scooch through here. There we go. Like a shuttle. Now the bridge uh, looks okay as well. Looks like it was hidden into the embankment pretty well and they actually meet the road above which is nice it's still you know the the bare ground texture in train sim world has never looked great sadly hopefully that's something that can be improved on a little bit down the road Alright, we are wide open now. We've got a 55 speed limit or permission. I should have gotten started on the notches out of the yard because we're on a, it uh, went from 0.8 to full on 1% now. I'm just thinking how nice it would be to have some uh, truck trailers on these. These fields out here look pretty nice. I like the fence. Telephone pole, power lines. It's just, you know, very pink. Like everything's very pink. The, the coloring is fairly close, but it's uh, pink, pink, pink. Got your wind brakes out here because it can get windy as hell out on the, uh, the plains and high plains out west. Extremely windy, like 30, 40, 50, steady. Like tropical storm force winds, just steady. Now see, I'm out here over this grass. You see all this grass and my computer is like crapping itself right now. Uh, I think that's a lot of, of what's going on is this, uh, this grass out here. And uh, I don't know if you know, it looks great. I love having all the grass. That does not look great. Uh, okay. Um, head back this way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but you get away from some of it and look away, and it's it's not too bad um, overall. But if there was like some sort of mod to to unrender a lot of the grass, that would probably help as well. This uh, this river or creek or pond or whatever the hell it is right here. I've never seen it before. Honestly, it doesn't look too bad either. It's uh, I feel like they kind of did their due diligence with uh, you know, shore side areas with with creeks, rivers, and all that. From what I've seen so far, like it's not just bare right down to the water's edge because that does not look natural at all. Uh, that's that's not a bad looking little area right there. We're actually losing speed now, 34 mile an hour, because I started way too slow. You basically need to get on that son of a gun straight out of Cheyenne or Laramie. 
nice little gully down in there with these trees. Albeit purple trees, but it uh, looks pretty good down in there. This is the area in which, uh, in the Dash 2, you can come in here and switch. And I feel like they didn't do a bad job of this area. It looks pretty decent. Compared to granite, uh, that area looks terrible. There's a noticeable line right there, which is not very nice. Yeah, but this, this industry right here doesn't look too bad. I thought this was the place that, uh, that made, like, explosives. But uh, I could very much be wrong, and often am. But uh, I thought it was this, because I thought it was the next big industry straight out of uh, Cheyenne. And this, yeah. <laughs> I noticed this yesterday. I, I am dead certain that this right here needs to be in Laramie. And for whatever reason, you know, the, the people at Dovetail to make this stuff, they're not American. They're not going to know intricacies like this that some may know because people probably look at this or don't even know this is there, uh, which, you know, is, I feel like it's kind of what they bet on sometimes with different countries and whatnot. But this belongs in Laramie, and the one in Laramie belongs here. So, Dovetail, if any of you see this, which you probably will not, please switch it. That'd be great. Heading up in the hills. Got a little power station over there to the right. Got some more little ponds over here. These don't look bad at all, I tell you. That doesn't look too shabby there. The reflection of the clouds in the sky. That's uh that's that's screenshot material. That's not too shabby, guys. And there are, uh, you know, it's a shame we don't get track three, which is like Screenshot City. But, uh, you know, we're people that, that take shots IRL um, out there. But, uh, all right. There we go. So the game essentially had to, like, load all that. So I'm getting fairly decent frames right now. It, it does have these sections where it seems to load in the foliage. Um, but it is, it is very bright indeed. Could be the time of day. Could be the fact that I didn't add very many clouds because I kind of wanted to see everything. It's like we got another uh, eastbound. Might be auto rack there. Yes, sir. So not not bad on the traffic front as of right now. That's uh what third train we've seen. We had the eastbound Z train. At the beginning, had that coal train going back into the class yard, and then this auto rack here. Once that train gets out of our area, I'm hoping it'll uh, settle up our performance a bit here. Yeesh. It is like pretty low right now still. Mind you, I did get a little overzealous with the uh, I and I tweaks, so whoop, don't want to do that. What I'm going to do is go ahead and turn the uh, screen back down. That should help a bit. Yep, it sure did. So it, you know, while while this mod that I'm using does work, uh, it, you know, you're you're probably still gonna have to tweak some of your settings to just get it where you want it, you know. I like being able to, to see the the grass and stuff rendering at a, a nice distance. Signal posts look all right.
Yeah, this don't look bad at all. I mean, they kind of had their work uh, cut out for them. You know, having uh, Sherman Hill for Train some Classic. So they kind of knew what they had to do, you know, but uh, that ain't too shabby. Ain't too shabby at all. There are some areas though that look pretty nice where it's where it's hilly like this and you can't really see distant terrain like this isn't bad. That that does of course change in some areas and uh, doesn't look so great. The, the the horizon is the issue. It's weird. It almost looks like you know flat Earth type something where there's like nothing beyond the horizon. 1.5% grade right now. We have lost about 10 miles per hour. And look, our train in the distance is starting to de-render, even with a shortened length. <laughs> They're going into some alien portal. That's eh, amazing. Got a little farm over here. A windmill. Old building. Like some of these areas, I feel like they did do a pretty good job with, if I'm honest. So they just dotted that with a couple of rocks. The supports aren't floating, so those look pretty nice. That bit there looks pretty good. Looks like a bit of runoff from water, heavy rain and whatnot, erosion. Not a horrible looking bridge. All right, we are out in the boonies. Roll up your windows and lock your doors. See, when you hop back in, it takes a moment to load everything, and then the frames go right back up. 60-55, as if we'll be able to get up to speed. Now, trains aren't always able to go track speed. You know, depending on how much power they have or how little power they have. Um, the weight of the train, things like that. But I feel like something is kind of a bit off with the the physics maybe i just feel like we should have a little bit more power a light a potato chip light or uh you know something to that effect with with four sd70 aces we shouldn't be having this much trouble you know mind you it's still it's still train sim world train simulator had the same issues um So yeah, the frames have like started tanking again all of a sudden. All right, we'll try the horrible standard 100 hertz. <laughs> I know, like I get it. Everybody doesn't have the same specs, but uh, when, when, you know, once you get used to something, it's like, huh. I don't want to do that. Let's see if that helps at all. Little bit, tiny bit, couple of frames. But the thing is, like, you know, Dovetail has to know that this is happening. I've seen a ton of people talking about it in a lot of different places. I know uh, Matt, I think, streamed it a couple of days before it was released, and it was relatively smooth, so how the hell they pulled that off, I don't know. Uh, maybe it was like some specific timetable, 
you know, that, that they knew had, like, the best performance. Um, I am not really sure how they pulled that off, but uh, people are having performance issues, and people with really good PC specs, so this is a total optimization issue, and I hope they're able to correct that without ruining the route, uh, because I feel like that is a thing that happens a lot, sadly, where... You know, something just gets ruined because it's got to get more speedy, you know, more, more playable. And uh, there's there's got to be a fine line between, you know, fun and looks and it playing well. And uh, hopefully they can figure out what that is. So I'm definitely getting much better frames. Um... Not terribly better frames. Again, I, I jacked up my I and I settings for like the level of detail on the on the green stuff or green, more like yellow around here, like trees and grass and bushes and stuff like that. So that could have some to do with it. I also jacked up the uh, view distance as well, which could have some to do with it. starting to think it's really the grass because like you look back here and it's a lot smoother but then all this friggin grass starts rendering uh, and it's not that great See where where it is. All right, we got a ways to Hermosa. A little over halfway to uh, Granite there. I think I'm gonna save it. Can I save it? And I'm gonna back out and change my settings and uh, see if that is any better. So one second. All right, so we are now resumed. I changed my uh, scenery level of detail, or the foliage, if you will, and the view distance as well. So we'll see what that does. Uh, <laughs> it, it doesn't seem to have changed much. So I'm going to start messing with some other stuff here. I'm going to put that back on 150 because it looks so flippin' blurry this low. Like, horribly blurry. Alright, that's a little better. I've lost like two frames. The old look down trick, of course, that's much better. I think the issue is just. You know, the, the kind of route that they chose, Sherman Hill, it is wide open spaces. Yes, I just said that. Um, but it is. It's wide open. There is a lot for your game to render. Whereas, like, Clinchfield, I got really good performance because everything is right track side, so it doesn't have a lot of crap. It's got to render in extreme distances. Um, so that, that certainly plays a role here. So, like, I've kind of got this hill blocking us, right? The frames have gone up. So it's not having to render, like, what's in the distance, I think. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. So I'm going to look over here where it's flatter. And there's a lot more, and the frames just start tanking terribly. Very doo doo caca. Uh, when you get in, it gets a little bit better, and then it kind of slowly drops. It's it's very strange. I don't know if there's like some kind of memory leak going on or something like that. 
going to turn on my uh, my overlay here over on the right side. I do use AMD hardware, so it's an uh, AMD Radeon overlay. I'm going to try and peep that here for a second. It says my GPU utilization is pretty much maxed out, which is good. Temps aren't terribly high. They're, you know, about where they should be for Transom World. <laughs> RAM utilization, 5.5 gigabytes. CPU utilization, 16, 15%-ish. Temp on the CPU looks good as well. It's pulling some decent power. It's really nothing crazy, but uh, now I'm noticing the frames are going up. Some. But we've got this massive hill, or berm, off to our left here. So uh, it's blocking that, that distance that it's normally having to render. So I think that is an issue. Um, over by Cheyenne, it's you know it's wide open and flat. Like the the more you get kind of towards the summit or Sherman Hill itself, um, it's you know it's not as flat and wide open. So it might be a little smoother. It's it's markedly smoother now, uh, but around Cheyenne, it is an absolute nightmare. seems like it's always going to be a limitation with Train Sim World. Is this, you know, kind of wide open scenery like this. Uh, you know, it's just, it's the Unreal Engine. There's really nothing that can be done about it unless you just turn your settings way, way down and then it just looks like Roblox. And I'm not into Roblox, personally. So, if I wanted to play Roblox, I'd play Roblox. You know, I, I feel bad for you guys using the, the legacy consoles that uh, I've seen pictures of the render distance on some of this stuff, and it's ridiculous. I would I would have Dovetail Games pay me to look at something like that. <laughs> it does not look good at all. I mean, this is bearable here. Frames have gone up. A lot of grass just rendered right in front of us. I saw it pop up. The frames immediately dropped. So if you're like me and you're using INI settings, you may just have to flat wipe them out. I remember uh, when Rush Hour came out and Boston Sprinter released, um, you you pretty much had to wipe out your uh, INI pack file. Um, not your pack file, just your INI file. Because it, uh, it was killing the game and doing really weird stuff and uh, you know it could be something like that I just could have to reset it and replug my settings in it does look fairly good out here though I will say these gentle rolling hills you know compared to the the areas where you can see the horizon you know I'm kicking a dead horse on it I know but it doesn't look good, and uh, it's a problem with stuff like that. You know, we got, uh, well, for one, we got a train coming out of eastbound. Who's doing a uh, horseshoe curve? So, so two classics, two old bays, two throwbacks. Um, you know, may even be in the, this coming month in December. Who's, uh, we'll see. Who knows? Um, but it's it's not as wide open. It's it's in the hills of Pennsylvania, uh, essentially. It's like a manifest. So who knows? Like 
de determining on how well that's done and if Dovetail is like, hey, you know, they, they take a step kind of like what they did with Rivet and made them wait, not make them, but request that they push back the release to just fix a few things, um, you know, which is always good practice. Uh, got a pusher on the back. You know, um, maybe it'll be decent. Who knows? Uh, it'll it'll be kind of cool to, to have Norfolk Southern already. Um, you know, something different. Just to add, to, we got CSX, UP, uh, Canadian National. You know, hell, we just need CP, Norfolk Southern. You know, a couple short lines would be cool. BNSF, not going to happen. Uh, you know, but BNSF would be pretty sweet. All right, my frames are being bludgeoned to death right now because that huge swath of land in the distance before us here unfolding grass bushes. I am convinced that is what it is. When I first started playing this yesterday, it, it kind of it gave me that feeling right off the bat because there there have been nothing on a scale this size with this much foliage and grass. You know, it's almost like you know. I I personally always liked a lot of foliage and grass, and in this and train simulator, and I feel like you know. You get what you ask for, kind of thing, and now you just kind of screwed because. All right, so right there, all that grass just rendered. We were getting over 40 frames. All that grass just rendered. I saw it pop in on the ridge line to the left, drop down 20 frames, like that. It's definitely the grass. It has got to be the grass. So some grass just went away there. Went up to 40, came back, went back down to 25. It's totally what it is. It's it's the wider open areas and it's the foliage, sadly. We're still trucking uphill, 1.5% grade. I think it's just about right around that till we get to the summit. I know it don't look much like a summit, but you think about it, when you're in Cheyenne, you're at about 6,000 feet above sea level. I believe the summit is like 8,000 something maybe. So, it's a, it's a bit of a climb. I like the fans going, but uh, something that would be cool is like when you see these fans up here, these, uh, these turbines in real life, all of them aren't always moving, you know, so some of them could be killed or static, which also would help with 3D rendering and motion and animation and stuff like that. You know, that would help as well, a tiny bit, albeit, but... Uh, it looks cool seeing stuff like that in the distance and would look a lot more realistic if some of them weren't moving. But I'm man, I'm just looking at this brush and scrub off to the left and this fence line. That looks great over there. It does. to the right there. Now see, way out there, there's nothing. So... Got a ranch out there. It's the Dutton Ranch. Um... You know, I'm I'm an idiot. That's not up for debate. I, I have my I and I setting, like I was saying. Uh, I had it on five. You know, which some people run at ten with beast machines. I had it on five, which is fine for every other route. So when I saved and quit and came back, uh, I set it to three. 
and that's still too damn high. I just need to put it on one, or hell, zero. No grass. I don't know if that's what it do, but it's worth a shot. God, I can see, look in this direction, 19 frames. That is depressing. I just got this computer, I'm getting 19 frames looking that way. Look that way, still pretty far flat. Look forward, and I've got the engines blocking. You know, there's a little ridge line over there, and it's smooth. Very smooth. Smoother than a hairless cat. Still cranking 23 MPH. Let's take a look at this display down here. It's like we are 8328. See if these things actually light up with the horn and bell. They do. They do. That's all right. It's pretty cool. Yeah, these displays don't look too bad. They're limited in functionality. Um, kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Oof. Just looked up, and yikes. Frame rate. Got some more wind breaks over there. That model of those look pretty nice. They are fairly prominent out here. But man, it's washed out out here. It is like, uh, that was blinding. Getting our lean on right now. Very much tilt. Frames are great in here. Big old farmhouse out yonder. And then you start looking around and it's it's trying to render that stuff like 50 miles away probably. And it ain't happy. And by it, my computer, myself. And that horizon. <laughs> oh man, just just continue the sky down to the horizon. There's got to be a way to do that. I mean, there are games that use the Unreal Engine that look phenomenal. Uh, again, it's probably down to some kind of performance thing that dovetails got to do with the game. Still rolling. Is that down there? I think mile marker. All right. We are just shy of granite. Get some Canadian air conditioning going on here. Open with caution. Just chill out on the front porch for a minute. Some fresh air. Foreman Hernandez had some uh, bean burritos for lunch. Headed due west. You know, it's uh, it's honestly not a bad looking route. The the limited 
time that I've spent with it thus far. You know, it's, uh, I think it's time to eat some words because, uh, you know, I said it's essentially Sherman Hill from Train Sim Classic, and it is, but I never had much love for Sherman Hill on Train Sim Classic. It just didn't look that great. And I know some people don't give two flippity flips about looks, you know, it's just all about the the train or the operation and stuff like that but I you know to me the scenery is paramount it is almost as important as the rolling stock uh, and TS classic for me wasn't really that not like the rolling stock was great but you, you throw on some searchlight simulation enhancement packs and you're golden uh, for the most part but I feel like this actually looks pretty good uh, if they could just figure out this foliage thing, you know, maybe if there was a way to reduce the scale without it looking like, uh, you know, crap, for lack of better words. Uh, you know, maybe whatever the scale is, I don't know how they place them. If they place them one by one, they, they, I don't know if that's how it works. That seems like it take a long time. But reduce the scale by 10%. You know, have some people test it with different machines. Reduce it by 20%. Test it. 30%. Test it. You know, do it and send it to me. I will gladly test it. I'm not sure if that's uh, how it works, though. I'm, I'm assuming it does, though, because it the same thing with Train Simulator. A lot of the foliage... And the polys or the polygons and the foliage and stuff like that play a large role in performance. Coming up on the balloon. It's granite right up there, I believe, directly ahead. Yep, right around that bend. That raised red rock in the distance there. That's granite. Yeah, like the, the scenery out here does not look bad. I, I just hope for the sake of it being fixed. Uh performance wise that it's not just outright killed you just saw this stuff up here right before your eyes right look at that it just grows right out of the ground right in front of you <laughs> magic magical highway over yonder and I like the, the something I always usually listen for that I didn't really with the last video that I did looking at this is the ambient sounds uh, you know hearing all the bugs and whatnot during the day uh, when you're around Cheyenne anyway you hear birds you know chirping and stuff like that and cars and traffic and all that and then I did a dusk scenario and I heard like crickets or cicada uh, doing their noise which is pretty cool you know little little things like that add to the experience for sure
Shove it up the hill. Our lean on again. So we're getting pretty good frames up here. Uh, it's almost where I have it capped at 60. But mind you, this over here, it's just dirt ground texture. Nothing. Nothing on performance. That's granite over there, by the way. The uh, ballast and aggregate facility. Nice little wrench out there. Digging out the hillside there. All right, we've gained a little speed. Just about halfway down the line. At 16 miles to Hermosa, I believe. I'm really eager to see how this thing is with dynamics, but we're gonna need them here in a minute. I like the checkpoints. Checkpoint boards look good signal masts, relay boxes and all that look pretty nice as well. I mean, pretty standard stuff, but at least they're placed there. See, now through here I'm convinced there's, there's not as much grass or just scrub and rock, you know, just bare ground. And uh, it's just easier on performance. There's nowhere near as much grass around here. Got some more of those big wind breaks up here. And then boom, look at that. So there's all that grass right here, right? I was back here before it loaded in, getting great frames. And then it pops in and there's boom, 10 frames gone. Yeah, I like the ambient sound, the wildlife and stuff. That's nice. Very tranquil. It's like one of those things you can listen to when you're trying to go to sleep. On the YouTubes. Yeah, it don't look bad, though. Don't look too shab. 60, 55. 60, of course, would be for uh, passenger Amtrak. Try and set us up a photograph. You know, sometimes I'm 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 thinking here on this run if you know, if we're only getting power on this lead engine, you know, or, or, or at least the two front engines anyway. I mean, the banking comm bit is on, but man alive, I feel like uh, <laughs> we should definitely get a bit more power. This is a slog. Frames are still doing all right. A little bit less grass, and it's more hilly, so they can hide some of the, the unpleasant places. It's like the LGV route, you know, they, they kind of... They kind of figured that one out because... You know, you're going at such a high speed that you can't really see the scenery and you see it at a blur. Uh, whereas this, you know, yes, the speed is 55, 60, uh, but you'll be lucky to actually reach that. If you're going downhill, you know, be good to go. 
but uh you know they, they kind of got away with that with that french route and you know it's an okay route but the scenery looks like hot garbage dumpster fire and uh that route you know just makes me wonder if they had put true scenery on it at a distance at the speed that that train travels and have your computer your pc console whatever try to render that at speed what that would have been like probably uh, a total nightmare but it's just you know it's interesting it just goes to show how this how this game and the unreal engine truly works and you know their simiograph proprietary stuff I hope they get that sound occlusion fixed because you can't tell, you know, squat having the, the friggin' nose door or the windows open, which is kind of crappy. Good looking model though, like I was saying yesterday in the other video. It ain't a bad looking model. Very sharpish, those vents there. The fins. Not bad at all. I've seen better horn models in Train Simulator, but, uh, you know, it do be like that. Do be indeed. And the lights. I, uh, they've even got the bulb wattage on there. That's pretty nice. The number boards look great. They really do. And the lights. I noticed that when they preview streamed this. I caught a few minutes of it. They and possibly antagonized, as usual, I'm asking questions that won't get answered. Um, but anyway, I, I noticed the lights look pretty good. They actually had a nice warm glow to them. Uh, whereas Train Sim World headlights and lighting usually looks like crap. Just very unrealistic, you know, very bland. Those don't look bad, but then, of course, you've got the ditch lights, which are just, you know, like a... I don't know what to relate them to. They just look horrible. But, I mean, look at the headlights. And then look at the ditch lights. Now, traditionally with American Freight and, and trains in general, you're supposed to run full high. But uh, I wonder if we can turn these damn ditch lights off. Yeah, it looks much better. Got a road over here. See what that damn sign says. Nothing. Is that a... That must be like a collectible dealie. Not really, uh... Super crazy into those. Definitely a lot more hilly. That crossing, what is that? No. 1% grade. Hopefully we'll be able to pick up some speed. So there's some trees out here. Still hear that ambient sound. I like that. I do enjoy that. I'm a, I'm a nature person. I love the outdoors, so it's nice hearing those birds and stuff. Got a little pond right y'all. Some more windbreak. Some uh, very, very interesting scenery there in the distance. 
like a an alien battle cruiser landing. And you can hear the wind. I just noticed that. You can hear the wind whipping. That's nice because it's, you know, it's windy as hell out here. Lost a tire. Old billboard out here by the highway. See what this says. Entertainment on demand TV. <laughs> These generic billboards. You know, it's nice that they're there, but uh, you know, maybe be a little bit more creative with what's on it. So it's a lot flatter up here. You know what else would have been nice? And it may be. I just haven't seen it. It's maybe some damn bison, some horses, some cattle. You know, sheep. It's it's Wyoming. Maybe maybe a random ass bighorn sheep that wandered down. Alright, twelve miles. To Hermosa. We gained a little bit of speed on that 1% section, but uh, we're back up to 1.5. It's going to soak in the view. And again, wow, wow, we woo. So we're getting into some grass again. That's a that really is a shame. It's it always seems like Dovetail shoots themselves in the foot somehow. I just saw a lot more grass render there. Frames are crap once again. You know, they, they, they do a fairly good rendition of Sherman Hill here, you know, if, if I'm honest, and I feel like it does. It looks it looks pretty good scenery-wise. But then the, you know, the grasses, to, to try to make it as realistic as possible, are just, uh, they're, they're killing the root. You know, console folks... I know they don't have as many options, and I know that I'm still running I and I tweaks and my resolution a lot more than it should be, you know, which would aid. But you know, I've seen people saying, no matter what they do, uh, the the foliage is still an issue. But this mod I'm running uh, does help as well because uh, you know, looking around. Just in the in the yards mainly yesterday, you could definitely tell that uh, I wasn't too happy. But you know, now with this mod, um, it'll it'll shorten. What's nice is you can do stuff around industry and yards, and it'll shorten trains and rolling stocks in the yard. So uh, you know, it'll be a little bit smoother. But as soon as you start trucking at a uh, Wyoming. As soon as you start trucking out of Cheyenne, it's going to get gnarly. Come down to a 7.7% grade. Hopefully we can build some speed. Bail off again here, even though it looks like we're good on the brake pipe. Wide open. 
I could cook a hot dog on top of my computer, the exhaust vent right now on the top. But yeah, it's it's not bad. I feel like they're, you know, they've they've had some trouble in the past with American stock, but I feel like they're getting a bit better. Um, but but then there's things where, you know, things just get broken and they can't really stop to correct it, and it's put on the preservation team uh, to try and fix later on, which you know can, can be quite some time. Uh, you know, which is which is nice, but it, it kind of stinks that it's not optimized from the get-go. But uh, you know, Boston, Boston Sprinter, the uh, Boston Providence route, that wasn't a bad line. Uh, the rolling stock was, you know, pretty good. The sounds were really good. You know, as far as dovetail history with uh, Trains of World American stuff, uh, Clinchfield was pretty good. I like Clinchfield a lot. You know, personally, getting a weird sound effect there. Uh, but yeah, I, dude, I thought their F7 model was lovely, very nice. You know, the paint looked good. It, it kind of sucked that we couldn't choose between the, the two different Clinchfield variants. Um, you know, but it is what it is. We got that SD40, which is essentially the CSX-2. Um, bit of track missing there. I think it's supposed to be like that. Um, you know, so... Uh, and that route, I still love the Clinchfield route. It's got some of the most beautiful scenery in, in Trains of World as a whole. It, uh, you know, that's not even a debate. <laughs> I will thumb wrestle you over that. Um, but yeah, it does look really good in places. And then in some other places, it just looks like unfinished scenery. But, uh, you know, it's... It, sometimes it just seems like hit or miss because like I was saying with the Boston Sprinter bit uh, you know sounds were good, physics were good it looked good but uh, you know there were some issues with like infrastructure and safety systems and things like that which you know if you're going to do an American route with ATC and ACSES and all that good stuff it's got to work it's got to work right you know that's like doing a German route and slanderizing PZB you know, it's not going to fly. And uh, that's that's historically how things have been, just even looking at train simulator routes where the PZB is incorrect. They're good routes. They just get bad reviews because they don't work properly. You know, it's not all about ooh, pretty, pretty all the time. Like, you know, things have got to work right. But, uh, you know, we, we, you and I and everyone else, uh, know that they kind of bet on a lot of it, you know, falling by the wayside and a lot of kind of uber casuals not giving two dams, you know, which kind of sucks for everybody else. frames again got these track segments over here which are hilarious because it's like they froze the ballast with the track segment <laughs> instead of just throwing the track segments down they've still got ballast with them this looks good out here these trees on the ridge line 0.8% so we're still gaining a little bit of speed we are fairly close to the summit frames are not nice right now.
And I've seen some stuff, uh, people talking about trains coming up on them, behind them. <laughs> like, you know, the, the timetable is set in such a way that, uh, the physics don't seem quite right, like right now. We, you know, I feel like we should have a bit more oomph to these engines. That, uh, you know, another service is somehow able to haul ass and they just get right up behind you. I haven't experienced that yet personally, but I've, you know, I've seen and heard quite a few people post pictures and talking about it. So, all right, so that grass just rendered there. Boom. Frames be murdered. that. It's not doing it now. More grass right there. Like, out here, you know, maybe get rid of a lot of these patches of grass. Just have that scrub. You know, I feel like that scrub would be good enough. bit up here looks great. I'm really liking the look of this. Now, the scenery, of course, when you see the distance, not, not so much. the summit sign um, that is a <laughs> I'm going to try and say it as legal as possible that is a grossly negligent oversight the freaking Sherman Hill summit sign come on it's Sherman Hill so hopefully we'll see that soon that's <laughs> it's, it's laughable it is laughable it's uh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, so we need to let it run out here a minute. So we got to put these dynamics on. A 
Let's see. Reverse or forward, neutral, reverse, reverse or handle in, throttle stop or idle, dynamic brake off. Uh, reverse handle in, any position, dynamic brake off. Reverse or handle in, reverse forward or reverse, throttle stop idle. Yeah, so that's pretty basic information. Alright. Downhill. Set it up here. We'll give it some independent while we're speeding out of control. There we go. Now it's kicking on. About time. Now, as far as I know, if you make any kind of train brake application, it'll cut the dynamics out. So you typically, I think, want to set your train brake to, you know, a minimum app, firstly and get it settled and then throw your dynamics on. This looks really nice through here. Looks like it's keeping us steady, but we're on a point eight right now. With not a heavy train. Scenery is really nice through here, these rock outcrops. I'm sure we bail off, even though the uh, the gauges look alright. Yeah, that rock formation looks lovely. Cannot see these crossings. The south may be it with the gate. All right, so we're leveled out here for the moment. We'll come off the dynamics. Just throw it back and set up. Get prepared for the next section. cut off. That looks pretty good down there. It's pretty. Very idyllic. Man, I hope they fix this damn sound occlusion. And some bull shizzle. Alright, back uphill. Eight percent again. I don't think we're too far from the tunnel.
Yeah, I think that's it right there, actually. There's that European dump truck, cement truck. <laughs> what a joke. Sandy out chomp. There's the tunnel. The rocks look really great on this cut. Downhill again. Let's go ahead and get the dynamic set up. Make sure we drop all our power off. Alright, throw it set up. into the trains just catching up on that crest back there these rocks look fantastic too the shading on them very spicy crispy crispy spicy crispy spicy taco all right straight to four so at least you know, with the dynamics on this thing, I remember the dynamics on some of the train simulator stuff. Just, <laughs> they would derail your damn train if you weren't careful. You're better off just not using them. Uh, you know, so at least these kind of work. Pretty crappy frames. Not horrible. Not like Cheyenne's side, but uh, not fantastic either. And then immediate frame killing as that grass rendered there and it takes its sweet ass time rendering too cut it to six Got it to seven. I've seen people also mentioning the metals not working well, even if you keep to time and do really, really good. But uh, I can honestly give a damn about metals personally. I know some of the roofs are kind of messed up and impossible, damn near. Let's 
check out those uh, crossing arms here. So they blink, they go down, they don't ring. But let's see if they go up mid train here. There they go, and boy howdy, light speed, those things go up, they go up a bit too fast, uh, but they do have a nice animation once they get to the top, kind of bounce back and forth, so that looks alright. Now I saw this yesterday, a lot of floating assets, um, you know, just haphazardly placed, car over here is floating, several of them actually, but you know, not a bad crossing right here. Try and catch up to the old gal up here without hitting the one key. Been dancing on the dynamics. Now that is interesting. Is that two trees they stuck into one? Is that a new... Is this a new tree? Huh. Interesting. Next up on Tree Simulator, we talk about new trees. Yeah, I don't recall seeing that before. Another cut. Looks really good. First time I'm seeing that. Looks alright. The dynamics don't sound that great. <laughs> very, very high pitched and weird and whiny. Like the, the sound is not far off, but it's. It's hard to describe the sound. I'm sure as hell not going to try and make it, you know, verbally, the noise I'm trying to express. But it's too, you know, too high pitched. Almost like a turbo or something. It, uh, they don't really sound like that. But, you know, I don't, I don't know how they got them because they pretty much ripped the sounds from this thing off the Class 66. Also known as the Shed or Mr. Ying Ying. Got that EMD Ying Ying. You know, honestly, these dynamics seem to be doing an okay job of this thing. I'm actually having to play with them, you know, back and forth a bit. Sit over here in the guy's seat responsible for the train itself. The guy that gets little love from engineers. It is always at fault, no matter what it is. The conductor. We need a, a national celebrate your train conductor day. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I bet you there is one. Good God, there's there's a day for just about everything nowadays. This side of the cab over here looks pretty good. This Speedo box right here. The e-brake valve. CB and all that looks, you know, pretty good. It's it's nice that they didn't just kind of ham fist it, you know, with the with the internal look of this stuff. You know, it's all right. I'm you know, I'm proud. It's it's like uh Dovetail is a a bouncing baby boy and they have just taken their first steps kind of deal <laughs> like that's you know kind of kind of get those vibes with this like it's there's some ups and downs as with all things but you know this is uh, uh people are usually having to make mods for this stuff and while yes people are going to find little nuanced things um you know probably mod them and stuff like that but for the most part it, uh, it seems pretty legit. And some wide ass open range there, so not getting the best frames. This is one of those times where using dynamic braking in a train sim is nice. It, it wasn't always the best experience in train simulator. Because um, a lot of it was broken. But, uh, you know, this takes... This takes a bit more skill and, you know, pretty much any train crew will tell you as well. Uh, you know, going down a heavy grade versus up. And can always be a bit more of a challenge and a bit more butt pucker in the moment. Well, not any train crew. I'm sure there's somebody out there that'll be like, going downhill's nothing. Super easy. But, you know, to each their own, like always. But you actually gotta you actually gotta manage it. You know, when you're when you're climbing up the hill back there, you're just notch eight hoping and praying you don't get under one mile an hour. This looks really good through here. Except for that distant horizon, man. <laughs> You just look up and see that, like, ice blue. Ugh. The super elevation is nice as well. You know, I don't I don't think I've pointed that out. You do get your lean on. But, it, you know, it looks like it's nicely done. That's what keeps these trains at, at, at a higher speed. Going around curves and whatnot. Yeah, 
Yeah, this looks all right out here. Show enough. Show enough. Look at that. <laughs> All right, how are we working it here? Impeccable camera work as always. Sorry about that. Go take some uh, Dramamine if you must. Still working it downhill. Yeah, this this ambient sounds good. I'm really liking that. It's nice. Little things. Oh, and looky yonder. We got somebody battling the grade. Ethanol. That looked all right. I enjoyed that roll by. It was pretty smooth. Uh, oh my God. What happened? Oh dear God. What's happening? So that was me trying to get back in the engine and so that's me hitting the one key what in the actual F just happened okay so the train is long gone I'm gonna try and control zero Yeah, that's... Oh, sweet baby Jesus in the major. Okay. Alright. Yeah, be uh, be careful with your free cam and stuff. That was awkward. A bit awkward. Alright, eight miles. Through here, it's pretty wide open again. Lots of grass. A lot of grace. I 
Ah, and I just noticed our CCS came on. Now, see, I don't know a whole hell of a lot about it. I'm not going to pretend to. Um, but it is a safety system on this line out here. Uh, and I'm, I do know that it activates when it's able or when it's necessary by default. But I didn't turn anything on in the cab here. So it may be one of those things where it's like default no matter what. Unless there's some super secret way to turn it off. But I didn't turn anything on, so maybe it just happened by default. Yeah, I just noticed that's on though. That's strange. Watch out doing uh, the the A key free cam and stuff because I've had stuff like that happen before as well. Where uh, you know, if you're looking at your distance per se, like at the top left there, seven and a half miles, and you free cam out, uh, sometimes it'll get stuck to where you your free cam position was, if you get what I'm saying, and it won't actually count down. Um, it's an odd thing that happens. We're on the home stretch. I think we got like one more curve. And then uh, we're going to be rolling into Laramie. Laramie. I like those houses on the hill back there. It's cool. CCS says green. That is yellow. Alright, and it's going to cautionary aspect. Now, I believe it's just coming off the line into the yard here is what it's all about. It's one of those things where, uh, you know, the dreaded M word. Annual, ma'am. You know what I'm saying? Manual. Or, uh, our old friend Manuel. Uh, it doesn't exist, sadly. And, you know, this is one of those times where you know, just give give someone a task and a, a wiki page and, uh, you know, I'm sure Union Pacific would have been more than happy to supply some information on how this works, right? You know, they're not always necessary, but give us some manuals, dovetail. You know, I don't, I don't really know how this NCAP signaling works, the CCS. You know, I kind of get the gist, like this red yellow, that's caution, I'm assuming. I'm, I'm thinking it's a approach medium type deal. Where this, you know, it's going to be yellow coming up here, and then the next one's going to be red. Out of Hermosa is pretty nice, pretty relative. 
Uh, now, when you're headed to Cheyenne from Hermosa or Harriman or wherever, when it gets into those 1.5 sections, you know, that's, that's where the, I don't want to say the dynamics are legit, but that's where they may meet their true test, if you will. It'd be flat AF out here. So, yeah, I did earlier, um, you know, I, I did stop and save this timetable run and then load back in. So I don't know if that borked up the signaling. I know it can do that on some occasions. Scenery out here ain't the best. I get it. You know, it's grasslands, but it it kind of has that look like Clinchfield did, where you know somebody went and laid down the foundation of the route, and then so so and so forgot to go back and actually add things like rocks, grass, trees, roads, donkeys. like cans, you know, stuff like that. This looks all right coming into here. That road down yonder. turn green again. What in the actual F uck? Uh, I don't know if that's got to do with the fact that I, like I said, I, I saved and then came back into the scenario here. Or not scenario, timetable run, service. Whatever you want to call it. Because normally, uh, with Train Sim World, you know, it's so tight arsed that when you pass a red, you know, a dangerous aspect, you do not pass go and collect $200. Uh, it, it boots your ass right to the menu. So. What a dollar. Still point eight, still coming downhill. So see that stack in the distance there? Union Pacific has had that son of a gun painted for decades. U-N-I-O-N-P-A-C-I-F-I-C, right? Yeah, that's I, that's I, yeah. I think I spelled it right, but anyway, that should say Union Pacific over there, and they took that stack and put it at uh, Dino Noble plan instead for whatever freaking reason. So. Alright, let's go ahead and kill the dynamics. <laughs> what in the hell was that supposed to be? That was some sound effect, Dovetail. Jesus. What on earth was that? That was evil incarnate. Alright, front end of the train's leveled out. Ass end's coming on down. Just 
give it a, give it a, a, a minimum application here. scary noise that just happened. Little neighborhood back in here look pretty nice. Couple of dash two skis. Yeah, if I am not mistaken, this right here needs to say Union Pacific, and they uh, they put it in the wrong. Oh, okay. Well, it's facing the wrong way. But still, why does the one at uh, at Dino Noble say that it should be facing this way? What the hell? I don't even know. I don't care. And then the station. Doesn't have a concrete platform on it. That's the old station there. And the foot bridge. Here all the different birds and stuff, which is pretty nice. Downtown luring me. Got one mile. Slowed down way too much. I could have kept coming off that a bit higher, but I wasn't sure with these uh, signals being wackadoo here. Oh, God, that truck. Looks like it was coming right at us. I think it shouldn't be too hard to stop. So, Laramie's not all that bad. I'm getting a solid, oh god, we gotta stop. I'm getting a solid 60 frames through here. You know, it's flat and wide open, and there's a ton of assets sitting around here, but there's none of that grass. It's more, you know, high deserty. Yeah, so, so far it seems like it's just really bad um, around Cheyenne. Uh, and then west of Cheyenne up to about Granite um, is, is where some work could be done. Um, you know, it seems fairly normal uh, the rest of the way. But that was the run complete with uh, Yuri's... Um, Concepts mod, which drops down the length of trains, which should help with the uh, PC performance. 
Um, but the whole grass thing, I don't know. I'd say maybe wipe your I and I file and start fresh. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh, dump it. Dump it. Dump it. I didn't plan that right. Eat. So that's the run. We did a full run and I got an achievement. Whoop de doo. But uh, there will be a lot more to come in the coming days and, and week or two. Uh, going the other way, checking out the various industry around here. Um, you know, and whatever else may come around. But I'm going to go ahead because I didn't do this yesterday. If you saw the video uh, of the kind of root overview uh, of what you get. So scenarios, you're going to get six scenarios. Um, this one here is is a... A scenario that was made on Train Simulator Classic that they kind of made as an ode to uh, this edition here. And it's a it's a pretty neat scenario. I kind of remember the old one, um, but I haven't played that yet. And then there's Sandbox Switching around Cheyenne where you can just kind of do whatever the hell you want, which is kind of cool. Uh, so six scenarios. Timetable. Timetable is pretty girthy. Now, this is what I was talking about. If you do the mod, the second one here, this is Yuri's uh, Consist mod. The second one. The first one is OG. Uh, so you, you obviously choose your train. For example, we'll show you what the Dash 2's got here, so we'll hit continue. You know, there's not a whole lot to do, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. Maybe, maybe some peeps will make some scenarios and stuff like that, but there's... Six, eight, ten. Nah, that's alright. And then the, uh, the ACE. You know, you get quite a few. A lot of them are, you know, early morning and middle of the night, so they pretty much don't exist as far as I look at it, so. But there's still quite a bit, but uh, anyway. We'll get back on it in the coming days and weeks. Like I said, I hope you enjoyed the video, and it was somewhat informative, as always. Uh, if you have any questions or comments and all that good stuff, please let me know down below. But uh, that is it. I will catch you next time. See you later, guys. Take care.